This is a DIY open source gaming console that you can actually put together yourself. And the best part about this whole setup here is it's quite inexpensive. These things don't cost a lot to get everything put together and put down some pretty decent gaming performance. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together an open source gaming console using the AMD ASRock BC250 mining blade. And recently on the channel, I did a video taking kind of a first look at one of these. These were actually produced in 2021 for mining. And basically what we have here is a cut down PS5 APU. It's got six cores, 12 threads, and a 24 compute unit RDNA 2 iGPU all built into the system here. And as you can see, uh, the top does look a bit hacked up, and that's because I've actually removed the top plate, allowing air to flow through the cooling system here. And in that video, it looked a little something like this. We kind of just set it up on the desk, did have a power supply on the rear side. I personally use a little flex power supply, but since I got my hands on one of these, I've been having a lot of fun with it. So I figured I'd go ahead and do some type of case for this unit here. Now there's several online 3D prints that you can do and I recently picked up a new printer so I've kind of been going crazy with it. But the one I chose to go with I got from Printables and this is from Next Gen 3D. Over there it's the do-it-yourself steam machine powered by Bazai and there's several different files that you can print. If you've got a smaller bed like a 220 they've got files for that. If you've got a 300 millimeter bed it does make it a bit easier. But all of it's available over there. I'll leave links in the description. And this case is pretty awesome. I know next gen 3D printing probably spent a lot of time making this model. And I gotta say, they've done an amazing job with it for sure. This did take a little bit to print. I mean, as you can see, it's pretty big, but uh, everything is here that we need to get everything installed. And this is gonna house the BC250 and a flex power supply. The power supply I'm using here is a 350 watt that was originally designed for an eGPU setup. So it's actually got two 8-pin PCIe connectors and the BC250 only needs one 8-pin connector. I would recommend at least the 300 watt power supply with this board here. But uh, this print is actually pretty awesome. It kind of slides right in here. You can see all of the ports on the rear line up. We've got USB 3, USB 2, Ethernet, and DisplayPort. Now that I've got the power supply plugged in, we can grab the other half of the case. And this is going to slide on just like it did with the other half. It actually uses a rail system inside and it kind of goes over the bottom heat sink. So it just slides right in here. We don't need any screws to hold the BC250 in place. Basically, we'll just need some screws for the power supply and for the mesh front and rear panel. And that'll hold the whole unit together. This is designed in a way where it's going to pull air up through the bottom here, through the fins on the BC250, taking all of that air right out of the case itself. And hopefully it does stay nice and chilly. Next Gen 3D Printing does have a full list of parts that they used for their setup, so they've got the fan listed and everything like that. There's also some fan mounts that you can use and an extra power supply mount if you're using a different power supply. But I gotta say, my favorite thing about this whole setup here is the honeycomb front and rear. I think it looks good, and I was gonna print this in a different color, but I had a lot of black filament, and I just didn't unload it. I just went ahead and went crazy with it. And since my printer isn't 300 millimeters, it's like 256 millimeters, I had to print this in two pieces, but the files are over there and they do include some little locking pegs that you can use to get this to be basically one piece once it's all together. I thought that was pretty cool for people that just don't have a big enough printer to do one piece. And it's gonna go right on top here. And originally I was gonna go with a few nuts and washers here, but I found that with the print that I did here, if I use some fan screws, they're a bit thicker, I can get by with the front and the back just fine. So I don't need any nuts glued in from the back side. I'm just using these fan screws here. They go in tight enough. Ran out of all the black ones. So I've got a few silver ones on the back side here, but I still think it looks really good. Now, the one thing I'm really interested in is to see how cool this thing actually stays. Because like I mentioned, the way this is set up, it's actually pulling air through the fins on the BC250. It's going to expel all of the air over here. I've got a 120 millimeter Noctua fan. I can reach all of the IO on the BC250 and it's not a huge unit either. When you compare it to let's say a PS5 or even an Xbox Series S, it's still a pretty small little setup. I've got the unit sitting vertically now and it's definitely taller than the Series S over here. It's not as tall as the PlayStation 5 and I believe this is like the first gen PlayStation 5. I never upgraded, it still works, I've been going hard with it. 
I'm actually going to be using the unit just like this. Uh, you could set it horizontally if you want to, but I wanted to make sure I had enough airflow. It's going to come in longer than the PlayStation 5 or the Series S, but once it's set up on the desk, it really doesn't take up that much room. And I've got this connected to a 27 inch monitor right now. There's several ways to modify this case also. Over on printables, you can uh, pick up a different front panel that'll allow you to put a power button on it. For this unit, I just plug it in, it comes on. I've got the jumper on that BC250 setup ready to go. And I'm gonna be using Bazai, but official Steam OS using the main branch 3.9 will work. The reason I'm using Bazai is because it's a lot easier to modify the file system. That way I can do some overclocking to the GPU here. I've got it so it'll boost up to 2000 megahertz and uh, out of the box, it's usually sitting at 1500 megahertz, but at 2000, it gives us around a 30% increase in gaming performance and it's well worth doing. But moving down here with our system, you can see we've got that BC250, six cores, 12 threads, total of 16 gigs of system memory. It's actually GDDR6 and I've dedicated six gigs to the GPU. From the BIOS, with a modified BIOS, you can go all the way up to like 12 gigs if you want to. But I found that nice sweet spot would be 6 to 8 with this unit. Checking out a little bit of gameplay here. Uh, one of my favorites, we've got Fallout 4. And with the BC250, we've got an older CPU. So it's based on Zen 2. It's got 6 cores, 12 threads, and it'll clock close to 3.5 on all 6 of those cores. The iGPU there is based on RDNA 2, and we've got 24 compute units. This will put down way more performance than the Steam Deck, but it's still not a true 1440p machine. And older stuff, yeah, you could run it 1440 if you want to. I mean, I'm talking like Left 4 Dead 2, Half-Life 2, some Portal. You could go on up there if you want to, but for newer games and a lot of the AAA games that were released in the past five years or so, 1080 high, sometimes ultra is really the way to go. But I've been having a lot of fun with it, especially given pricing. Now that's one thing I wanna talk about here. With the BC250, uh, these things should be going for around 100 bucks. I've been seeing them listed anywhere from 100 to 150 over on eBay. If you don't wanna get your hands dirty, there are people selling them that are ready to go with like Bazai or another variant of Linux on them. But personally, I wouldn't pay over $120 for the board itself. And I'm including shipping there. So I do think it's around a $100 board and ASRock did produce a ton of these things. So we're starting to see them just kind of being parted out right now. They're usually set up in a 12 board configuration and all you need is one board to get some gaming done. But with the price of RAM right now, given that this thing does come with 16 gigs, so it's unified memory. It's gonna be for our system and the iGPU. This could be a good way for somebody to build a cheap gaming machine right now. The last thing I wanted to talk about here were temps and total system power consumption from the wall. So we've got that BC250. I'm using the next gen 3D 3D printed case that I did. I've got a Noctua NF F12 fan, which is an industrial fan. And this one does move a lot of air. It gets a little loud. I might swap this out later on, but it does good enough for this system for sure. When it comes to 1080p, average temps were 68 degrees Celsius. And the maximum that I saw here was 84. So we didn't hit thermal throttle. And I'll tell you with the board that I have, I've not refreshed the thermal paste at all. And this is a mining board. I'm sure it was used for quite some time before I got my hands on it. We could probably bring these temperatures down a bit by redoing the thermal paste and pads on the heat sink, but I'm gonna leave it like it is because it's working just fine. And I also measured total system power consumption from the wall using a kilowatt meter. And this board is like rated at up to 225 watts. We've got a CPU and an iGPU that needs to be powered. At idle, these are a bit high. We're sitting at 33 watts with Bazite here. 1080p gaming, around 168. And the maximum I saw with this setup was 203. And that was while it was processing shaders. And I'll tell you, I mean, when it's processing shaders, it is working pretty hard there. Those are where those higher temperatures come in and more power consumption. But overall, this is a really nice little setup for the price, especially if you can get a decent case. Now, some people might not be into this case. I completely understand. There's others online that you can go with, or you can always design your own. And if you end up making your own case, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know what you come up with. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button and think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in picking something like this up, I will leave links in the description. 
Again, I wouldn't pay over 120 for the board itself. If you can pick it up for 120 or below, I do think it would be well worth putting something like this together. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.